Hi, I'm Kenneth Wajda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado and welcome to another one of my photography talks. Today I'm going to talk about gear and photographs. So this is a Nikon digital body which is not to be named because it's got a little piece of black tape over the model number. And that's because I'm testing this futuristic camera that can do things that no other camera can do. And it's not even April 1st, but actually I'm not. This is an old camera body and I covered it up so that nobody is too concerned with that. So what I was doing was I wanted to go out onto the streets of Boulder and Denver and places that have kind of a clientele that I want to work for. Doing portraits, doing family portraits, doing senior portraits, and I wanted them to get to know my work. But I didn't want to photograph them with film necessarily. So what I would do is I would take out a 4x5 Zone 6 camera, set it up, and let that be an attractor. It was a way for me to stand there and kind of just enjoy the, the setting up of that camera and the looking of that camera and working out the way it works for focus and practicing on that. Because I'm a newcomer to 4x5 in some ways and it gives me the option to see what the different lenses look like and to look through it. But while I'm doing that, people would come up to me. And I would give them my card or I would talk to them. But giving a card isn't the same as a businessman as getting their email and building a list of people who you've already made contact with and you might send a future email to talking about something that you're offering. So I want to put a 51.2 lens onto a Nikon and walk around and do black and white digital photographs and portraits of people out on the street, but make them not look like snapshots, make them look like formal portraits. And the 51.2 it definitely doesn't have, it's an older version, it's an, a non-AI that I picked up somewhere on the line, around the, along the line. And it's not the smoothest focus like a 51.4 I have. And I would rather be shooting that 51.4. But I did a test and the 1.2 to the 1.4, the 1.2 is still a softer background. And I knew I'd be shooting in a place full of people and I need to get rid of those people. So I brought the 1.2. But to use the 1.2, on one of my newer Nikon bodies, it says that you cannot mount it on any of the Nikon digital bodies. It, will, it may damage the body. And I thought, it may damage the body? Well, I have a D7100 that I use for a backup camera. And I thought, I'm going to put it on that and see. 24 megapixel, I'm going to put it on. And it was really hard to mount. It did mount, but it was a really hard, tight mount. And I was like, that's a little scary. And once it was mounted, it wouldn't move off of 1.2. So I thought, huh. Well, I know I'm going to be shooting at base ISO with a camera like this because at 1.2, there's just too much light. I'm probably going to have to put on a neutral density filter at some point. But I figured if I'm shooting outside in a shady area, I might be able to get with it away with it without the neutral density at 1.2 outdoors. And that camera had an 8,000th of a second shutter speed. So I did a test. 24 megapixel, it looked great. So then I pulled up this old D90. This camera I've had for five or six years. When it first came out, I picked it up used at a local shop and then I did a whole book with it. So I knew it was capable, but it's only 12 megapixel. And it's not that great in low light. And I'm like, oh, come on, it's gotta be a waste of a time to bother even trying with this. But because I would be shooting it wide open at base ISO, this camera was actually equal what I saw on screen to what the newer camera was giving me. And I figured if it breaks the camera, I'd rather have it break this camera than my backup camera. So I put the uh, Nikon 51.2, actually it's a 55 1.2. I put that onto this D90 body. I covered up the number with tape and then I mounted it. Another really tight mount, it wouldn't hardly mount, but it did. And then once it did, the aperture ring doesn't budge. But the focus works and it has focus confirmation in the viewfinder and focus is this thin. But I went out to the streets of Boulder and I walked around and I photographed people. And it was surprising. I, I photographed a lot of different people and out of all of them, only one, they all said yes and only one said they didn't want to give me their email. They didn't really want the photo. And I thought, huh. And I was actually a young couple, probably in their 20s or late teens, but everybody else, they wanted the photograph and 
I got their email and I sent them the photograph and they were very happy to connect with that. It was a, the photographs are really extraordinary, I think, and it's something that was something they didn't expect to get. It was a gift. And I photographed older folks, I photographed younger folks, I photographed a grandpa and his grandson, and it gave me license to go out there and walk around with this. And so when I took this out, sometimes I was, walk, I was setting up that four by five and I was talking to folks. And then if I talk to them, I said, I'll, I'll get your picture, but I'll use it digital so I can send it to you. And then I would get their email. Then I just started leaving the four by five in the car and just walking around with this. And it was amazing. I could create in the course of an hour or two, a dozen portraits that I was really proud to work and create that wouldn't have existed if it weren't for me going out there and bringing this. And so I came back and I set them all into Photoshop. I worked them the way I like to tone them, made them into black and white, and then I sent them to them. And I sent them the email with information about who I was and how much I appreciated them, allowing me to have that opportunity to photograph them, and then asking if I could add them to an email list with tips for phone photography, if they're shooting mostly with their phone, but at the same time, it would have some promos for some of the things I have coming up. And that was a nice way for me to make a connection, but also to collect their email address, to build a little bit of a start of a customer base. And even if they opt out on the email, they still have seen my work. And before that day, they hadn't seen my work. So I'll put a link to the photographs below. And I have a little story I wrote up for one of my blogs about this. I'll put that in there too. And so you can take a look. But I, I really found it to be a wonderful, wonderful experience to create those. And they happened because I went out there setting out to meet people, get their emails and build a little bit of a client list and to work out what I could as far as finding people to photograph. And I met people from other countries who were visiting. I met older people who've been married for 50 years or more. And it was just a, a wonderful thing. And when I asked people to be, ask me if I could photograph them, it's interesting to see how they often light up. They're like, really? You want to photograph me? And the photographs are uh, a treat. I, I found a, a woman having coffee with her dad. and. As he gets older, that may be a, a photograph that's cherished for the fact that we had that time together and somebody photographed us in a really good way and, and we really have something we can keep from that. So I love that kind of work and I'm such a portrait guy. I'm such a people person as far as photographer goes. So I'm always looking for ways to connect to make more portrait work. So that's what I was working on with that. So I'll put some links below and that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying this, hit the subscribe button. If you can support me, please hit that Patreon and I'll keep bringing you photography talks. Thanks. I appreciate it.